Joining me now for more on this, UNSW Professor David Sanderson with expertise in urban disaster resilience and humanitarian aid. Thanks very much for your time. So when we're looking at this situation and now arrests and even charges happening for these building collapses, is that a fair enough approach? I mean, how much do we know around the codes, the building codes that are there and whether or not they're widely enforced? Yeah, thanks for having me on. What a desperate situation this is. All disasters are terrible, and this is particularly horrendous, not least, of course, that it's uh, Turkey, but also Syria, where there's been a civil war raging for close to 12 years now. Uh, you said it's um, it's the enforcement of building codes is the issue. So builders build, uh, and it's a matter of record that a, a vast number of buildings um, do not meet requirements put out in the building codes, but it's failure to actually enforce the building codes is the issue. And we see this across endless disasters, if it's Sichuan, if it's Nepal, if it's Haiti, if it's Indonesia, you name your tragedy of an earthquake, it's the failure to enforce building codes that actually cause the buildings to fall down. And the government in Turkey has a somewhat astonishing approach of construction amnesties. So if you build your building and you don't build it well enough, you can apply, and uh, if you're fortunate, in inverted commas, you get an amnesty, so it's okay now. So the building, you don't need to do anything to it. And uh, one uh, estimate puts it as something like 75,000 buildings across the earthquake-affected area had built in amnesties. And it's, that's astonishing. Um, you can't have an amnesty for an earthquake. Yeah, and that's stating the, the tragic truth. So is there any reason behind that beyond it's sort of, oh, well, um, you know, if we make everyone a, um, abide by the code or gum up the economy, we don't have the expertise, is there, you know, presumably these things have happened before over the years and answers have been called for and change and it doesn't happen. So why is it happening? Yeah, I mean, and there are arguments about uh, so-called informal settlements, about formalising informal settlements, but that's what an earthquake. When an earthquake happens, uh, the building falls down because it wasn't built well enough. Uh, look, the most corrupt construction uh, industry around the world is well recognised as uh, construction industry. That's in Australia, in the UK, in Turkey, in Indonesia, or across the world. Uh, we did some research last year looking at how corruption fuels poor construction leading to disasters. And I'm sorry to tell you, there was a lot of information from Turkey that we found uh, from research. Uh, so corruption is everywhere, but when corruption causes the building to be weak, an earthquake finds that, exposes the corruption, and that leads to the absolute tragedy of the story that you just showed. Yeah, and the scale of it is, is what's changed here. So the approach that's going to happen charges already is this positive at all in terms of people saying, well, even if the government's going to give me a leave pass, the government of the day, I can be charged, I can go to jail, or is it just the government looking for other people to blame? What's your view on that? Well, there have been reports to the latter. Uh, after the Izmit earthquake, that's earthquakes that struck in August 1999 in Turkey, builders were chased down the street, and in part the government toppled because of that, and the current government was in with a promise to reform and improve building codes. Now, those codes may have been improved. Uh, they may be very, very good. But it, the failure to enforce is the issue. And in many parts of the world, um, the evidence is that corruption and incompetence make this horrendous mixture, which leads to the codes not being enforced, which leads to buildings being fall down. We have the wit and the wisdom and the ability to build well enough buildings that do not fall down. Uh, in earthquakes such as this. Now, the case has been made. These were two very powerful earthquakes. That is absolutely true. 7.8 and 7.5, they were very powerful. And yet, it is possible to prevent the images you're seeing now through enforcing codes. I was on your program the end of last year about a similar story in Indonesia with, with uh, schools collapsing and children dying. This is a phenomenon that occurs in many countries of the world. And unless and until it's taken seriously, the disasters are not natural, but they're in part made by human decision, uh, then this will tragically continue. Yeah, and it was sadly prescient. Is there anything the rest of the world can do? I mean, the you know, having aid contingent on this changing, does that get to a sort of sovereign government issue there? Well, aid's needed. It's, it's, it's the stories that you're saying. And of course, as, as, as we're knowing, there are hundreds of thousands of people now at risk of the second disaster through being extremely cold. Uh, uh, Martin Griffiths, the UNA chief, 
has been very clear on this. This is a failure of recovery as well in response from the global system. At a time when the world is straining over so many needs, and yet this need is so palpable, so real. So of course there's an immediate need for that. Of course there is. And there is a need to shine a light on the fact that corruption in construction worsens disasters across the world. David Sanderson, thank you for your time.